Now that this project's finally done, it's the hard part. I'm gonna figure out how to make an entertaining test video of trying this thing out. I should probably check the comments. There's been some good ideas, but there's a fair amount of people that just want to see me destroy this thing. Can't just slam carbon fiber into anything. I'm not intentionally trying to break it. I want to test it. I do know that I want people to feel like they experienced how big and how absolutely sharp this sword really is and what it's like to have something that's that ridiculous around. It might be hard. I'm definitely scared to push this thing to its limits. When it's so light, it doesn't seem like it could be that strong. But I definitely need to show how strong it actually is. I'll include some goofy stuff. There's no reason to take this too seriously. I mean, the ultimate goal is to entertain people. This chip bag sucks. Good thing this thing's over here. Hmm. Thinking about cutting stuff. I should probably figure out how to use swords the right way. Comments are gonna be brutal. I definitely gotta do some fan service. Try to recreate some stuff, even if it's not realistic. Well, nothing left to do but sleep on it. See if I have a vision of how this video is gonna go. Hopefully it works. It's time to test the sword, the carbon fiber and titanium buster sword. I truly love the sword that I made, but I am worried about it because it was very complicated and difficult to make. But right now, I wanna start easy in the testing to make sure I don't break it right away. And there's nothing easier to cut than a cactar. Come on, Chocobo. Telling me to change the bag. It's very difficult to apply the cross's arms with bolts all over everything. Oh, that was a bug. Smush on the blade. Fruit Ninja. Alright, go ahead. Ah. <laughs> Use the cake swear. Get it! and just let it come down. Nope. It just hits a point where it's too much. It's too, it's way too much force. <laughs> if you were level 99, you'd be able to do it, Jerry. These things are making it difficult. These bolts get in the way every time I try to move. So they are going away. Also, the sword handle in the game is round. 
and it is very difficult to tell where the blade edge is at when I use it. Unfortunately, it's gonna change the color because I only have black grip tape to put on it to tape some aluminum angle to it so that I have some indexing to tell which way I'm pointing the sword. Much better. Now, it is water jug time, right? Just so we're clear, I'm not a swordsman. I make stuff. I hit like the top. <laughs> that was the best you could do? Shut up. Well, I kind of missed, but if I can go through one that easy, let's try two. a little too easy. The last bottles were HGPE and they're very easy to cut. These are PET, P-E-T-E, -E, and they're not as easy to cut. Ready? Oh, I missed. Oh. Like I said, not a swordsman. I caught it a little bit. All right. Second. Yeah. Maybe enough for a still frame. <laughs> you know what we could do? We could film that shot with the GoPro at like 240 frames per second. And then slow down when it's out to eighth speed. Yep. Oh, I almost fell in my hand. Yep. Everybody wants watermelons. That's not even half of it. It doesn't keep me even. Okay. Question is, how much did it slice and how much did it break? If I can get one melon, let's try two. Ready? <laughs> I missed it. No, I did cut it. No, I didn't cut it. I didn't miss it. I cut the cord. No, I didn't. I think I hit this. Well, there's nothing wrong with the blade. Practice swing. Ready? Ah, first try. <laughs> That worked really well. More? 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 Since there's about a 100% chance that I'm not going to be able to slice through all four watermelons at once, I'm using a guide rail, just like they do on that show where they test knives and stuff. Whew. Yes! <laughs> The sound from that was fantastic. Did you hear that? That was an amazing sound. That was so cool. Guide rail for those of us that are bad at using swords. A lot of people asked for tatami or tamashigiri mats for me to test this because that's like the standard test for a sword. Unfortunately, there was no way I could get tamashigiri mats in time to be able to use them for this test video. But I am going to order a bunch for the future. I don't need to tell you what this is, right? Everybody wanted materia. I printed these little cups out of clear PLA and then I put some colored plastic in from food container lids. It was a tight fit, but I taped it in place with aluminum tape to reflect the light out. And then I rigged up some LEDs to some batteries with a little switch on them so that I can turn them on and off and have glowing materia in the sword, like this. The only reason I have been able to use this the way that I have so far is because of the changes that I made to the sword 
after the last build video was finished. This pommel is no longer 3D printed. That is cast out of lead. All the lead shot that I put in the handle with epoxy didn't make it to the bottom and it had a bunch of air pockets in it. So I dug that all out and melted it down to use for a pommel. And I didn't have anything except for this stuff called rockite, which is kind of like concrete. And I used that to do a lost PLA mold and I poured the lead into it and lo and behold, I got a perfect pommel out of it. Chopped off the extra from pouring it in the mold and cleaned it up and the pommel ended up weighing 7.7 .7 ounces instead of 0.4 ounces, which is awesome because it's best place to have a lot of weight. And I used the rest of the lead that I had and forgot to put the extra chunk from the pommel in, which is why I have two sticks and I melted it and poured it into an aluminum tube to get a rod to fill the handle with. This gave me an overall counterbalance weight of just over three pounds which is way more than I put in the first time. I think it was less than a pound and a half. And then I epoxied all of the pieces in and I put that little piece at the top because it didn't come out as good as the big piece and it ended up being loose in there somehow. My lead is loose. I think it's the little, the smaller piece that's at the top, but the handle hole reaches the material slots which are removable. So I just poured super glue down into it to lock that thing in place and the pommel fit great. It was a little tight, so I just used a rubber mallet to stick it on. I rechecked the depth of the lead rods with a bamboo skewer to make sure they hadn't moved when I hammered the pommel, and the sword ended up with a slightly portly overall weight of just over 10 pounds, 11 ounces. What really matters is how much the moment of inertia is on a sword, not its overall weight, which is why I made it heavier, moving the balance back further. So it effectively actually feels lighter now, but I came up with a way to give you an idea of what it feels like to hold this thing. The scale has been torn for this piece of wood that's going to hold the handle where my hand goes. It's supporting approximately 26 pounds. And this is at 15 pounds. So even though the sword weighs 11 pounds, cumulatively, you're putting 40 pounds of force into it just to hold it if it's out straight. I'd like to show you how much torque it puts on your wrist when you hold it one-handed, but uh, I can't do that because this scale only goes to 30 pounds. I promise you to hold it like that with one hand is difficult. If I had to guess how much force that is, I'd have to say that it's probably right around 100 pounds. Basically, even though the balance point stays the same, the two points that you're hanging onto, as they move closer together, you have less leverage and perceivably more force. Oh, you know what I can do? This might scratch the handle up a little bit, but it's worth it in the name of science. I can't put enough force on it. Come on, just stay where you're at. Yep. It got to 90 pounds and it said error, roughly. 100 pounds of torque on your hand, and that is why a 10 pound, 11 ounce sword can feel like it weighs 100 pounds. Just imagine what a 100 pound sword would feel like. That's enough about the science of holding a sword. It's time for the best part of the video. Ultimate test of this sword to see if I can use it like Cloud does. Unfortunately for me, I don't have the light to be able to film that right now because clouds are rolling in, so I have to wait a full day. But you get to see it right now. It's the next day. It's very cold, it's very windy, it's drizzling a little bit. It's hard to hold this thing because the wind wants to blow it over constantly. It's time to do some combo cloud moves. Most of the stuff is a little ridiculous and doesn't make sense, but we're gonna try it anyway. I have to consult my cheat sheet to remember. <laughs> left to right, right to left, spin and down job. Okay. Put that back together. Blade's holding up great. <laughs> By the way, this dummy is 
extremely dense expanded foam with layers on layers of duct tape on it. Do you want to grab the duct tape? It looks like about every two moves the dummy is going to need repaired. That's coming apart too. I think he'll hold together for a couple more hits. So it's left, right, left, right, spin right, spin right, spin, stab. Okay. <sighs> Big swing and a miss. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> I missed. Yes, you did. Yes. Ah! <laughs> okay. Here we go. Right side to left side up, drop the sword. Left side to right side up, drop the sword. Right side to left side up, then spin. Right side to left side down, spin. Right side to left side down, then left side to right side cross, then blade up stab. Did you catch all that? <laughs> Sit him back up. All right, let's try it again. Here we go. I need a much bigger platform to keep him stable. Dummies taped back together and we got a bunch more wood on the platform. Let's give this another shot. This one's actually pretty cool. And then cross, cross, big down chop with the step in, step back, double spin hit. <sighs> Ready? Okay. <laughs> I took out the tripod. Keep going. Is that a spin? It was a spin. And then into the stab. No, cross. I can't remember now. These combos are difficult. We're going through an immense amount of duct tape to put this dummy back together for me to try to do combos from the game. Every move that he does, I'm chopping the crap out of the dummy and we've almost gone through an entire roll of duct tape to try to put him back together. So we're gonna move on to limit breaks. What you're looking at right now is all the footage I have of Cross Slash. For some reason it got corrupted or went away. I don't know. It just disappeared into the ether. I know a lot of people wanted to see it and I did too. Didn't even get to review the footage. Guess I'll have to put it in a future video. No! <laughs> Knocked his head off. Round two. Finally got that arm clean off. <laughs> Braver is kind of insane because he jumps about seven feet in the air, not moving. And then magically his body does a flip while his arms and the sword stay still. And then he stops spinning, falls back to the ground. And during that time, his rubber banded up arms go with the blade, chop into him. But there is one move that is more unrealistic from Final Fantasy. That's a whole roll of duct tape. And that is Omni Slash, but I'm gonna do it anyway.
I did it. Wait. For real though, we need to talk victory poses. <laughs> well, I turned myself in the cloud and I pulled off Omni Slash. And this titanium blade edge held up reasonably well for being titanium. It's still sharp. If you want to see how I made this giant 11-ish pound carbon fiber and titanium buster sword, I'll have a link to the build series at the end of this. Let me know if you think I did Final Fantasy justice. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Mowing grass. Ready? Hey, rolling. Ah! <laughs> Moving the sword forward makes my legs move forward. I'm going to have to jump weird. See, Michael Cthulhu do that with his buster sword. <laughs>